This week, our basement hero is the actor who played young Clark Kent in the 1978 Superman movie, Jeff East. Jeff, right off the bat, I do have to say that I am a huge fan. Uh, I loved, loved, loved the uh, Superman movie from uh, back in the 70s. And uh, it was a real pivotal movie for me uh, when I was a kid. So uh, I just thank you for your time today. And I really appreciate you coming on and uh, talking to us. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for telling me that. I, I love to hear that, uh, how much that impacted people when they see it. And it yeah, you I, guys have no idea how gratifying that is here as an actor oh well that, that, that makes me happy because it, like that that movie was so impactful on me like i knew every word to that movie like my whole life <laughs> so <laughs> it all the time it was so well written yeah and uh funny how people they come up to me and you're here for a reason i'm like yeah i know i gotta take a shit <laughs> <laughs> Like, sorry, it's the only thing I do, but yeah, those the lines in that film are uh, so well written. Yeah, and Puzo, Tom Mankiewicz, those guys are geniuses. Yeah, yeah, they but, really uh, are. It's it fun working on it, and I didn't realize what an impact it would have on people because of all the emotional stuff with the father and all the emotional stuff with the mother, you know. And a lot of people tell me how much it affected them, and, and I'm so glad proud to be a part of it trust me and i appreciate the <laughs> kindness thank you well sure um i i guess my first question of the night would be uh what do you think of henry cavill as superman do you think they're doing a good job with the whole mythology now uh he's actually my favorite of is he all really of them. wow yeah and you know i don't think they can ever do what chris did no i don't think you can come close uh but for what it is god bless him man and i think he's done a good job i just don't like the darkness of it i think i agree be, i think there should be more honesty about heart mm -hmm. caring about people, emotions instead of the horror and the badness in the world i think there should be some hope i think there should be some light at the end of the fucking tunnel <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Superman, at the end of the day, is about hope. I mean, to me, I feel like Superman's about hope. So, yeah, I agree. Yeah. You. Yeah, I, I totally, I'm not, totally agree. I have nothing, no reason to be other than honest, and that's how I feel. And if the studio asked me how I felt, I'd say the same thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. So what was casting like? How did you get the role of Clark Kent, the boy who would become Superman? Um, I did a film called The Hazing with Charlie Martin Smith. And it was about a guy who was a naive high school track star who becomes this big recruit at a, at a college. And this fraternity recruits him. And Charlie, Star Martin Smith, and myself are made to run around in a jock strap throughout the mountains of Arizona. And he dies. He gets killed in the beginning of the movie. Wow. And they blame it on me, the whole movie. It was called The Hazing. And I don't know if you've ever seen it. Campus Corpse, The Hazing. It's a trippy little film that we did for $500,000. We shot it in Flagstaff, Arizona, 1976. Anyway, Carol Littleton was the editor of the film. She did E.T. She did a few films you guys might have seen. And she was doing this, and Dick Donner was interviewing editors. So he was going around town talking to editors, and she was doing The Hazing at the time. And Donner saw the footage from The Hazing and said, Wait a minute, who's this kid out, the kid running, the track runner? And she says, oh, the kid's name is Jeff East. He was Huck Finn, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, oh, yeah, I know who he is. He goes, wait a minute. And he started watching the film. They offered me the role in front of me. They didn't even have me read. They offered me the role in front of me, in Saul Kine and Pierre Spangler, in Lynn Stallmaster's office. Wow. April 28th, 1977. I'll never forget it. They asked me if I had a passport, they asked me to read the script. They gave me a chance to read the script to even consider the role. I read the script. They made me stay in the office and read the script. They would not let me leave. <laughs> I read it about two hours. This is a true story. 
And I'm reading this Mario Puzo script, which is gigantic, like 217 pages. I'm like, Jesus Christ, Superman and Telly are you kidding me? And I'm like, oh, my God. And I didn't even bother to read. I read through all the stuff that I was supposed to do, but I didn't pay attention to I was into the, all the other stuff. And Donner goes, well, what would you think of the script? And I go, wow, it's long, big. <laughs> and he goes, well, what would you think of your role? And I go, what role? <laughs> and he goes, you young Clark Kent. And I go, oh, you mean the guy on the farm? He goes, yeah. I said, I don't want to be Superman. He goes, no, you're not going to be Superman. I wait a minute, Dick. I don't want to. I don't want to wear a cape and all that crap. I'm. I'm not putting on those red galoshes. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, you're not going to have to wear a goddamn outfit. I said, oh, I just get to be me. He said, yeah. <laughs> he goes, do you have a captain? I go, yeah. And Delia Sawkine goes, do you have an agent? I said, yeah. <laughs> Do I have an agent? Mm -hmm. And they called my agent, set the deal, and I flew out to London the next day. Wow. That's wow. exactly it. Flew to London. They start testing my nose. They start testing my wigs. I spent about five days doing that. Plus, I had jet lag. And Margot Kidder flew over on the same airplane as me. She was testing for, for Lois Lane at that time. Uh -huh. And I'd already gotten the point. And I sent a little note to her. I said, I'll try to put my two cents in to get Donner to hire you. <laughs> and she sent me a note. She goes, I already got the part. And <laughs> oh my God, I love Margo, but she was something else. Oh, my. So we had dinner together that night, and she ended up testing and getting the part. I knew she would get it because she was great for the part. Yeah. And Chris... Chris and I got to meet each other. We had lunch every day. He made me go work out in the gym with him every day. We got to know each other. I kept going, why do I have to spend so much time with you, Chris? He goes, well, you got to get to know me because you're playing me. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and uh, and we, we, uh, we play, he teaches me how to play chess. And he says, there's a way to cheat, Jeff. And he shows me how to cheat at chess. And I'm like, wow, you're showing me how to cheat at chess. This is awesome. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and so but Chris was funny he was a very interesting character very intelligent guy great mm -hmm. piano player yeah. and we got to meet you know, got to know each other pretty well and the rest is history it took me eight months to do that film oh, okay so when the movie premiered uh, what was the first big purchase you made about a Porsche <laughs> did you really about a 1971 uh, Canary Yellow Targa 911 SC, but it was used, but it was on the floor of the Hollywood Porsche dealership because it was so in such good shape. I bought it on the showroom floor. I walked in, I did the checkout for it. They said, How the fuck can you afford this? I go, I'm Fucking Superman. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, you're, you're great, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> what was the premiere like in 78? Did you attend like any special screenings or anything? It sucked. You guys hear what happened? It sucked. I take yeah. it. No. What happened? Joke. That was the biggest joke. Well, fucking invited. Because Warner Brothers decided, oh, well, we don't want to publicize that there's two Superman. And you have a very significant role in the movie. But we don't want to take away from the publicity of Christopher Reeve and all the 90 million plus advertising we did on the movie. Um, so you might. Um, so I called Mark McClure, who played Jimmy Olsen. I, we had a band together. I said, hey, Mark, I'm going to hit a ride with you. We're not telling anybody. I'm just going to ride with you. He goes, yeah, come on, man. I can't believe they didn't invite you. <laughs> we show up. Get out of the limousine. Mark and I are out stone. We're like, yeah, man, this is awesome. You know, they're <laughs> like, yeah, man, wow, look at all the people here. Like 10,000 people at Chinese Grom and Theater. And then the guy comes up to me, the announcer, uh, the guy from Gary Owens. I think his name was Gary Owens from Laughing. He was the announcer, and he goes, Jeff, what are you doing here? You weren't even invited. And I go, I know. Screw Warner Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, wow. 
watching this movie, and my girlfriend's sitting there with me, and she's got these big boobs. Well, I hear this Christopher Reeve's voice is dubbing my voiceover, and I'm going, oh, fuck. And my girlfriend goes, that's not your voice. And I'm going, yeah, you it's a jackass Chris Reeve's voice. <laughs> <laughs> and they're, they're playing the movie, and everybody's crying, and everybody's going on, oh, God, this is so good, oh, God. And I get out of the movie, and I get back in the limousine, and I take it. I didn't even take the limousine. I was so pissed off, I took a cab. Oh wow! So you didn't even cab. find out. You didn't even find out that Christopher Reeve overdubbed you until the no, and I was so fucking mad. Wow! And I'm I go up to Donner's house for the party, the after party, which I got invited to. Oh cool! Well, I invite you to that. If Donner invited me, he says, "Come up to my house afterwards. I want to talk to you." Well, he wanted to talk to me about. It. He was embarrassed too because he didn't know mm. they'd fired him before. They didn't do any of the posts with Donner. It was. Bullshit. Donner was a great director, and he got fired by the Salkinds. Salkinds are scumbags. Right. Let me tell you something. And on top of it, Christopher Reeves talked them in and let them do that. And they made up some story that, oh, the Tesla and the voice is different, blah, 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 whatever. My voice is deeper than his. Yeah, it's probably true. And actually, Chris did a good job, and it worked. Right. Everybody thought I was Christopher Reeve. So I went around and did all these movies that Christopher Reeve did. Right. Anyway, <laughs> and I'm like, uh, okay, and I'm at, I'm at Donner's party, and Gene Hackman comes up to me, and he gets mad. He says, what the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> I would be so mad at these assholes for doing what they did. Crazy. Because yeah. he saw my performance, and he saw what I did, and he was shocked that they did that. And there was no reason for it. And even Hackman tried to get me to do Rambo with him. We were going to do uh, First Blood. And then they, they all got screwed up and whatever. Stallone did it and they got Brian Dennehy. But, you know, Hackman was a huge fan of mine because uh, of that movie. And he kept saying, why did they do to you? Why did they do that? But I didn't give a shit because it worked. It actually worked. And yeah. I, I forgave I, Christopher and I became good friends and I did a lot of stuff for his foundation and I still do. I love his family. And, uh, but a lot of people make a big deal about that. I don't give a shit, but it was, I'm going to tell you something, man, 1977 or, or 78 Christmas is 78. When they showed that and they didn't tell me that was going to happen. I almost crapped in my pants. <laughs> I just want to say, okay, I want to say my friend Trevor, um, he's an actor as well, and I was telling him months ago when you said that you would initially do this, we got into the discussion, he said he, he sounds just like Chris in that movie. He did a really good job. I said, that's not his voice. And he's like, yeah, it is. It's not my voice. I'm like, it's not. He's like, yes, it is. I'm like, no. It's hey, you dumb voice. shit. I, I Googled. I had to send him links just to uh, prove it. Anyway, John, go ahead. It's Christopher Reeve. You know, it's the only time in the history of filmmaking where the lead actor actually dubbed someone else's voice in the movie. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Huh? It's historical. <laughs> AFI recognized it. The Academy recognized it. Yeah. In fact, I've been told, and this is weird, the Academy actually called me and said I had voting. They were voting for me for the Academy Award. One of the stipulations they couldn't vote for me was because of his voice. Oh, wow. So you got beat And I said, oh, God, it cost me an Academy Award, too. <laughs> Cocksucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. John, your turn. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, it's Jeff. So the Superman movie is a very pivotal movie in the hearts of every single little boy everywhere. Uh, when, you yeah. did, when you did The Day After, did you think that yeah. it was going to have the impact that that did? Whoa, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just like with Superman. Mm -hmm. We knew we had something going with Superman. But the day after was even a bigger deal. I even had people where my neighborhood, people where I grew up, people would send me letters. People sent me, we're so proud that you're part of this. People, we hate the fact that you're part of this. I got it left, right, left, right. And my neighbors, my neighbors would talk about it going, He's doing the day after. 
And when the movie showed, they all went, whoa. Yeah. You know, it really, it was a very interesting experience because my parents were very Republican, very right-wing. Bob Dole was a personal friend. Mm-hmm. And Bob Dole wow. would come to our house. And, 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 and he congratulated me. But you could just tell that they wanted to fucking annihilate the Russian. Right. Wow. Wow. That's, I, I didn't know that. that that's, that's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. And my father would take me out to the golf course, and I'd say, Dad, you know, this is for real. And I brought Stephen Gutenberg out there to the golf course where he belonged. And uh, we're at Blue Hills Country Club in Kansas City, very Catholic club and all this. And I bring my Jewish friend out there. He's a really good friend of mine, Steve Gutenberg. We go out there, and they sit back in the locker room after we play 18 holes, and like, we never met a Jew boy before. <laughs> <laughs> and we're doing the day after, too, cocksucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. True wow. story. I wow. swear to God, that kind of shit happened to me. Wow. So, um, since John asked about the day after, I'm going to say I have a lot of horror fans that listen, and they'll be upset, quite mad at me if I don't ask you about Pumpkinhead. Is there anything you'd like to say about Pumpkinhead? God. I love Stan Winston. I thought he was a genius, but I hate that son of a bitch's special effects guy. <laughs> he blow that fan of dust and dirt in my eye every goddamn night, and I'd be cleaning my eyes out. I'm like, you really need the fan tonight, Stan? You gotta have the fan when every time Pumpkinhead shows up, there's a blast of air. <laughs> yep. I'm all right. Like, yeah. Okay. Well, yes, sir. You're paying me thousands of dollars. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> what a nightmare. We shot all nights up in Topanga Canyon. Tom Woodruff had to get into that suit, and it had to be 90 degrees when we were shooting. It was mm-hmm. ridiculous. And then it would cool off at night, but he's still hot. He's wearing that rubber suit. And it, it was cool. It was That pumpkin thing was really cool. It, it would scare you if you saw it. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, uh, I'm sure. No, I swear to God. And his studio, dude, it was really cool. You'd go in there and you'd see all the stuff, the Terminator, all the your Jurassic Park stuff. In fact, uh, Stan Winston got Jurassic Park from Pumpkinhead. Huh. Spielberg was watching the dailies from Pumpkinhead and said, oh, this is a great film. He says, who's the guy who does the creatures? And Stan Winston got the job for Jurassic Park and the rest is history. Fascinating. Stan Winston became rich from Pumpkinhead. Wow. And Spielberg was a friend of mine and he, he'd always come, he, he'd always, he never hired me, but we were always talking. I'd sit down in his office and talk to him. And he'd ask me how we did all this crazy shit. And he was always fascinated about the film process and everything that went on with Superman. But he was really interested in Stan Winston. I said, yeah, he's a pretty creative guy. And uh, I told him the story about me going in to get my life mask. And, the pumpkin head. and they didn't tell me that they were going to put this thing over my head. He just said, oh, no, it's no big deal. And he starts putting this shit on my face and, you know, this white stuff, and it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then they stick straws up my nose. I'm going, right. oh, I'm in trouble now. Uh-oh. I'm in trouble now, boys. <laughs> and he's putting this sh- plaster pair of shit all over me. He goes, Jeff, we'll be back in 15 minutes. I'm like, 15 fucking minutes? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> and I got these straws up my nose. And they go, don't move, Jeff. Don't move. Arnold Schwarzenegger did the same thing, that big pussy. Oh, oh, and what did he do? He tore it up. Don't move. So I sat there for 15 minutes with this goddamn thing on my face. Wow, I couldn't breathe. Crazy. Dude, you guys have no idea how hard <laughs> that is. It is the hardest it's literally the most much. I feel like I went to Vietnam and had Agent Orange stuck up my ass. <laughs> <laughs> this was insanity. So I go, when is this thing coming off? And they're like, what did you say, Jeff? 
And I'm like, don't move, Jeff. It'll ruin the face. I'm like, and they pull the thing off and it goes, comes off and they got the perfect face. And when Pumpkinhead grabs me on the motorcycle, that's me. That's really me. But it wasn't me. Right. It was dummy me. Right. <laughs> I guarantee you, you will never experience anything like that in your life. Mm-mm. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a good thing you didn't move because then you would have had to do it again. So. <laughs> yeah. And I wasn't going to do it again. Get a body double. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jeff. So you uh, you had mentioned earlier uh, uh, something about golf. Now I, I play a lot of golf too, um, but your IMDb also says that you like football. So what's your favorite football team? Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs. That's a good. Um, I like the Raiders too. I'm a Raiders fan. Yeah, you know it's weird. I go back and forth, but I grew up in LA. But on, I was also a kid in Kansas City, so I'm a Kansas City Chiefs fan. It's weird. I like both teams. Uh, the quarterback for the Chiefs now is Mahomes, right? Oh man, he's great. Yeah, yeah, he is. I'm, I'm a, I'm a yep. Patriot guy, and I, I just recently lost my quarterback to Tampa Bay. So, yep, but, yep, yep. You yep. know, I never missed yep. the Seahawks game until I had a kid. Then uh, I haven't watched one in a minute. So. <laughs> I'm a New England. I, I think your coach is a, a genius. Yeah, I think New England's coach is a genius. Yeah. Belichick's yeah. unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what about golfer? I'm a eight. I'm about an eight handicap. Yeah. Uh, I swing too fast, and there's too many good-looking girls on the golf course. So I can't really concentrate. <laughs> <laughs> well, where do you golf? <laughs> I golf in Monte Carlo. I live in France. Nice. And I literally golf in Monte Carlo, Monaco. I actually did not know that you that you live in France. Until yeah. uh, I spoke to you, you know, months ago. That's that's awesome. Yeah, you know, I bet it's beautiful over there. Yeah, it's incredible, and it's not that expensive. Everybody thinks it's so expensive. It's not mm. right. So, what is your opinion on the current state of the television's Arrowverse? Have you actually watched any of those shows? Which the current what? The Arrowverse on the CW. You know, they got uh, the Flash, Arrow, Super. I do not watch it. Didn't think so. um, I don't watch any anything on television in France. I watch sports, and I go to the movies, and I watch Netflix. Very good. That sounds that, yeah. That sounds like a typical uh, weekend around here. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah here too. So, <laughs> yeah. Again, minus the sports because now it's uh, where. Where are you guys from? Me, I'm from Kentucky. You can't tell. <laughs> and, I, and, I'm, and I'm from New York. You're from New York, and a guy from Kentucky. I had a great friend of mine when I was doing Huckleberry Finn, who was my double. His name was Charles Muscagney, and he was from Natchez, Mississippi. And this guy had the strangest accent. It was a little bit of Creole, a little bit of Southern, and a little bit of white boy. And it was like, wait a minute. And he talked like this, and he was Italian. He talked like this, and he just, he just now just going to go to go I'm like, wait a minute, Charles. What was the first part before we're gonna? He said, oh, uh, you, you, I mean, I was going to it. was going to go. I'm like, oh, wait a minute, Charles. What was the last part of that? First time. I'm telling you, man, the accents in Southern Mississippi, especially. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, my favorite thing Whoa. is when somebody points out our accent here, uh, my my stock answer is, we don't have accents. Y'all do. I <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's what my wife says to me. Yeah. She's French, and she says, you're the one with the accent. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jeff, what's, okay. the, what's the weirdest fan experience you've ever had? Do you have any Oh, stories? God. I was in the London. I'm in the London Zoo, and I'm doing the uh, Huckleberry Finn PR, and I'm they're taking pictures, and there's all these little, the handicapped children of London, 
mm-hmm. are invited to the zoo to meet Huck Finn. And I'm standing there, and everybody's taking pictures, and we're all gathering, and the kids start grabbing me by the crotch. <laughs> ah. No, I'm not kidding. Oh, all that, that would be the weirdest fan experience. I would and I that. go, whoa, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And my man, he goes, yes, yeah, stand still. I said, I can't. He gets grabbing my dick. Oh, wow. And I was going, what, what, what? What do you mean grabbing me? I mean, they're grabbing me by the ass. They're sticking their fingers up my ass. Oh, my God, dude, what the hell? Wow. And wow. he goes, okay, okay, okay. Calm down. We'll bring you out. And the PR guys are like, no, no, we want shots with them, with the kids, with the kids. <laughs> And they're all like grabbing me by my balls. And I'm like, wow, this is ridiculous. Oh my God. I am not doing, and I'm 15 years old. I'm not demanding like I'm, you know, Gloria Gaynor. I'm like, I'm demanding. I'm not doing these shots anymore. And I walk off and I get in the bus. My manager comes over and he goes, What's wrong with a bunch of little kids groping you? Big deal. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> oh, <man>. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. Have a good night, boys. <laughs> Do you have any last words you would like to leave the listeners with? Be safe. Wear a fucking mask. Vote. I don't care who you vote for. And I'm glad you guys like keeping man because you're my friends, too. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. That made my night. <laughs> yes. Actually, this whole thing made my night. Thank you very much, Thank Jeff, you. For, for talking to me. And, uh, you know, it's just, it, it's been a long time dream to actually talk to, to you. And, you know, just, Thank you. I, I know you. I know you must get that a lot from a lot of Superman fans. No, know? I don't. No, it, it makes me feel good. It gives me goosebumps. It makes me feel good. Awesome. I like, awesome. I like to hear that from people. It's cool. And I'm glad you, you appreciated a good film. Yeah. Awesome. I mean it. I love it. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Take care. God bless.